What's up everybody, in this video we are going to shoot two birds with one stone. Wait a minute, what? Indeed, we'll build an end-to-end -end data engineering project using Python, SQL with some DuckDB magic and even publish the result through a dashboard in order to get valuable insight from PyPia. And yes, that's how it is pronounced. If you're interested in learning about data engineering and you want to embrace best practice when building Python data pipeline, We'll take a step-by-step -step approach to guide you to use all the useful libraries to do schema validation, unit testing, logging, and other neat tricks. It's beyond the L word project. Plus, you'll get a ready-to-use project to get insight on the usage of a given Python library. This video is part of a series, and in this first part, we'll talk architecture and dive into the first step of the project, which is the ingestion pipeline of the source data. That being said, if you are completely new to DuckDB, you may want to check out first our video, DuckDB for Beginner. Finally, all the code resource is available in the description, but please don't cheat. All right, let's talk about the architecture for our project. First, the data source. PyPI is where we need to get the data from. It is the repository where all the Python libraries live and we can get a lot of statistics regarding each one of these. Useful if you want to monitor the adoption of your Python project or understand how people are using it. For example, do you have more Linux users or Windows users? Since a couple of years, the team has made available the logs data directly in Google BigQuery. So we can get the raw data directly from there. This is great, but the problem is that this table is huge. So be careful when you start doing some query as you may explode your credit card pretty quickly. In our pipeline, we were only gonna fetch the relevant data for us on a specific Python package and timeline using the partition date. Then we will transform the data into a relevant table that would contain all the metrics we need for a dashboard. We'll keep the modeling simple as we just have one source table, so we will have just one table to feed our dashboard at the end. The transformation part will be done using pure SQL, dbt, and DuckDB. And finally, we'll use evidence, which is a BI as code tool to create our dashboard using SQL and Markdown. The fun thing with this stack is that you can run everything locally, a modern data stack in the box or in the pound. But in the real world, you basically want to have a remote storage somewhere for sharing and access control. And here I'll give you two options, either AWS S3 or Mother Dark. This is actually a must have, at least for the publishing part, as the BI dashboarding tool are relying on a query engine to fetch the data. Something I won't cover in this series is how to host your Python runtime and schedule these jobs. You can choose any Python runtime and data orchestration tools like Airflow, Daxter, or whatever have you. And if you want a video dedicated to this, leave a comment. And while you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe. That's basically just right next to your mouse. So now that we understand the high level pieces, let's focus on the ingestion part as this is the main topic of this video. So as we saw, we will need to get the data from BigQuery. So the first thing you want to do is create an account on GCP, just at our console uh, cloudgoogle.com. There is a free tier, so don't worry. The data is public of PyPI, but you still pay for any query that you run. So please be mindful about those ones, but all the query that we're going to do uh, will be basically covered by the free tier plan. So no worries about that. So let's over to uh, BigQuery and we're going to search basically file downloads, which is the table that we are looking for. And we click on search all projects. So that is going to go to all also public data set. And as you see, I have here public data set and I have PyPI and there is a couple of uh, table. The most interesting one is basically this one, the file download, which basically uh, give you one single row for each download of the Python library. And as you can also see right here is that the table is kind of big. So the most important thing to remember when you uh, query this data is to use uh, the partition uh, column. And you can see here that it's partition per day and the partition field is timestamp. So when you query this, uh, 
by a specific timestamp, then basically you're only going to fetch uh, and compute the data relative to that uh, timestamp. The other filter we want to use, of course, is to filter per project because here for this specifically project, I would like to know how the DuckDB usage has been going on on the Python project. So we'll filter on the DuckDB uh, Python project. So let's get started. Um, let's open a query tab and you see that by default, actually, um, they put a specific timestamp. Um, and you see, if I recover everything from, uh, that day, and basically this is going to process 200 gigabyte, which is already quite a lot. We don't need that. So I'm going to put basically another condition here to filter project. All right. So when I filter on specific project, uh, here, DuckDB, you see I'm down to uh, 73 gigabytes. And I guess for smaller projects, you're going to have even less data. DuckDB is pretty popular project, so they request still some data to retrieve. Uh, but that's basically it. So if I query, if I run this query, I get the data basically on the schema that we saw. So the data process as we saw is around 7.3 gigabytes, but actually the, 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 the result itself is really actually small because if I do a count on this, you only, you only have that much. And actually, if I save the result, let's say as a, basically it take nine bytes, not megabytes, not kilobytes, nine bytes of uh, space. It's really a small data set. So <clears throat> it's just to show you that the source data is pretty big, but actually at the end, what you get the useful information is rather small and that's still the raw data, right? We're going to do group by and so on afterwards for other metrics. And that would be even smaller. All right. Now that we have our BigQuery query ready, um, let's build the Python pipeline. So here I'm just opening VS code. Uh, there is a dev container actually also on the repository I'll be referencing in the description. Um, I'm using dev container and dev container is pretty handy. Basically what it happens is that if you open the command palette on VS code, you can run any environment pretty quickly uh, just by picking one of the distribution they have available. So here, of, of course, I have already a definition. So I'm just going to do reopen in container, but you can also just create your own Python version. But if you have already Python installed, that's the requirement. We'll need uh, Python. We'll work with 3.11. Reason why we don't work with 3.12 is because sometimes there is library that takes some time to update, right? And 3.12 is still a bit new. So let's take a bit sometimes, you know, for all the dependency to update to 3.12, but 3.11 is pretty safe. All right. So now I have uh, my Docker dev container running. And of course I didn't mention it, but as a requirement, you need uh, Docker to be installed. You can use Docker desktop. And so as you can see, I have a 3.11 uh, Python definition ready, which is corresponding to the Docker image here. Um, other things I can mention on the dev container is that we also mounting some credential path, usually typically for uh, Google cloud and for AWS. So Google Cloud will be obviously for uh, fetching the data from BigQuery. And for AWS, it will be if you want to push the data towards S3. There is already some uh, Postgrade comments um, that I've put there uh, just as a template. And as you can see, I disabled the virtual env because we are working in a dev container. So there is already isolation within that. So virtual env is uh, a bit overkill in that sense. And we install uh, the, the Python pa uh, packages, but we don't have any Python packages. So this is what we are going to start. So we're going to start with a poetry in it, uh, name of the project, description, yada. You can just click enter. So we're going to need to add 
uh, DuckDB for sure. We're going to need uh, Google Cloud BigQuery, uh, Google Cloud Load Python package, which is used basically to authenticate to against uh, Google Cloud. And there is also a weird thing when working with BigQuery is that they have a new API endpoint, which is way faster. And for some reason, if you don't install Google Cloud BigQuery storage, Python package, your, uh, your pipeline, which would be much more slower because you use an older API endpoint. There is a GitHub issue around that somewhere, but at least this is how I debug it. I'll put it in the description or here on the screen if you want to know more about this thing. But pretty handy to know that you need to install those to uh, use the latest uh, endpoint. And also a PyRO, I think, which is a dependency. Next to that, we're going to use also Pandas because BigQuery can retrieve the data directly in a Panda data frame and there is good interoperability uh, with DuckDB. We're also going to use Fire, which is a really interesting library to bootstrap a CLI. You'll understand that uh, later. We, I like to use LogGuru uh, for logging. It's pretty handy, has a lot of options. Finally, one of my favorites is uh, Pydantic. Uh, which is used to define models. So specifically here, we are fetching the data from BigQuery and we want to validate uh, the schema so that if something is going uh, fishy or sideways with the sourced data, we get directly proper uh, error. All right, so let's hit enter. So this will add uh, to our pyproject.toml, which was created uh, just before and is gonna also create a log file and we're probably ready to go. Two things we'll need, at least for dev point of view, is uh, PyTest for unit testing and also Ruff, which is basically a linter and a formatter. So if you use black um, or PyLint, uh, that's basically your replacement. It's super fast uh, because it's writing in Rust actually with Python binding, and so it's been quite popular. So let's create first uh, a folder called ingestion and add uh, a file in it and we call it pipeline.py. So what I usually like to do when doing a data pipeline is basically have a main file which is going to include the main flow and basically all the other components into a separate file. That way I can understand the pipeline just by looking at one file and also, I'm going to pass all the parameters directly to parameterize my pipeline directly at this point. And it's important to be able to parameterize your pipeline because here, for instance, you're going to be able to process given a certain window. So we need, uh, you know, a start date and a end date for the process. Uh, remember our query, we were using the timestamp column. So this is the one we're going to use. Other things that you want to be able to inject into your pipeline so that it's really staying at the CLI and you can run different in a different uh, way your pipeline without changing any hard-coded value. So let's start by doing just the main function. And we're going to say hello pipeline. And we're going to run this function. So the other thing I like to do is to have a make file for a couple of commands so that basically the only thing that I would need most of the time to run this pipeline is like make A, make B, or for testing, for formatting. So let's try to do first endpoint and call it PyPI ingest. And what we're going to do here is basically do a poetry run and we're going to call uh, Python and we're going to target to our model. So now if you want to run this pipeline, we just have to do make PyPy ingest and we have a low pipeline. Now that we have uh, this main three point goes, uh, let's start by creating another file called .bigquery.py. 
And in this file, we're going to have basically handling the BigQuery client, running the, the query, and maybe other things. So here is the first function to get the BigQuery client. Uh, basically, we're just uh, trying to the, get the environment Google application credential, which, and this specifically, you're going to need to go to IAM and basically create a service account around here uh, that has uh, this kind of roles. So like BigQuery data editor, BigQuery job user, BigQuery user, you might not need all of them, but anyway, they don't have right access to this public data set. So that's not a big deal. And basically you create uh, the credential after um, it's a JSON file and you're going to put this JSON file on a specific uh, location. Uh, I put the JSON file into the config.gcloud because when you're using SSO, so single sign on, uh, temporary credential are also going there. But here uh, for the specific Python pipeline, we need a service account JSON. You can also decide to actually use the SSO, but it require a bit different uh, access because here you see it's like from a service account file. And it's actually easier to just handle this way because that's how we're going to use it when you deploy it to cloud. So now that we have our client, we need a function to run the given query and fetch the result. And that's this function. As you see, I'm returning a pandas data frame. And basically I'm just doing a small counter to kind of measure how long it's taking my, uh, my query within the logs and I'm displaying which query uh, I'm uh, sending. So it's, it's useful when debugging to see if the problem is within my pipeline of my source query. And finally, we have a function to build the query that we will need. And you see here, basically, I'm doing the same query that we de er, did earlier. So I'm filtering on a specific project. I'm querying the open uh, public data set. And I'm specifying some uh, timestamp, a start date, and an end date. So let's go back to our pipeline file and just do import from the function we just ran to see if we, if everything is working and expected. Uh, we're going to import those function and I'm going to run the final result is a data frame and I want the get BigQuery result. Wow. It's been already super smart. So this is not going to work. I need to have a, a specific a Google project. As I told you, you need to create a Google account and a Google project. And this is where basically the compute billing is going to be associated. So that's the project name. I need to also set up the environment, uh, Google application credential. So for the sake of testing, I'm just going to set this viable and uh, funny thing that he autocomplete with uh, something from Alexander. My name is not Alexander. Right, so now if we go back to our make by PI ingest. As we can see now with the with the logs we've put there uh, using log guru, we have the query which is being executed uh, at the time and basically that's it. We could actually print uh, the data frame just for results. So let's go again. And we see we did retrieve uh, the data. All right, so now uh, we have a bunch of arcaded values, so let's take care of that. So I'm going to create the models.py uh, models files where I'm going to use Pydantic uh, to define the model of our parameters. So here I create uh, basically a data class, but it's a Pydantic uh, base model where I have all those parameters, which is start date end date, so that will be in our query past. Uh, the project where we want to filter the data on the query, so it's uh, in the work condition. Uh, the table name, which is the output table name, uh, we're going to use later. The GCP project uh, that's that's already are coded. The timestamp column, it might change, but actually it's not really needed there. I put it there. Then we have the destination because we're going to, once we ingest the data, we're going to be able to either write it locally on the cloud, on S3 or Mother Duck, or all at the same time. So basically this is just a list where we're going to be able to take local S3 and D. Then the S3 path, if we are putting uh, the data to S3 and the AWS uh, profile 
I don't think I'm missing anything here. I will see afterwards. Basically, the idea here is that when I run the pipeline, which today I just do um, make pipe PI ingest, now what I want to do is basically be able to uh, pass certain parameters to that pipeline so that I can decide how to run it. So now that I define my model, the beauty of it is that, is that if I come back here, I'm going to pass basically um, this model. Two things I want to do first, add some tests on this model, and just so that you get the grasp on how things are working, and maybe add uh, two endpoints, one for test and one for formatting, as we haven't done anything yet. So the format will be just, and so now if I do make format, Rafta has been uh, uh, formatting three files. Uh, so another one now for test, which is going to be just calling uh, by test and test folder that we need to create. Then call it test models. So what I want to test actually is that I want to use my model to be able to pass the different parameters and test that the query string is correctly built. So now that we have our models, uh, by PI job parameters, I can pass this as a type, which is pretty nice. So that's my parameters. And now you can see that if I over it, I can actually see the value of the by, by PI project should be a string. This one also is a string, the start date, the end date, um, so that's basically those parameters that I'm going to pass uh, through my CLI. But let's basically just try to add a test first for uh, for this function. So here, basically, we're just creating the model. And we have an expected query. And basically, when I call the function, when passing the model, we should expect this query string to be generated. And we're good. All right, so, so now let's come back to our pipeline. So what we did so far is basically we had a model for job parameters. We have our first function that get the data from uh, BigQuery. So now let's refactor this to include the PyPI uh, model. All right, it's done. But now we need kind of to parse the thing that we enter in the CLI and convert it into this model. Right. So do you have different option in Python to create a CLI and parse those things like click or typer, our example. But the cool thing here is that with fire, you can generate automatically a CLI based on this Pydantic model. So let me show you that trick. So I just added fire. And basically what we do here is that we convert any key value arguments and pass it to the model to convert it as a model and we invoke the function, okay? So fire is gonna be able to detect anything that come after basically uh, ingest, so start date, yada, yada. So if we compare to our models here, so yeah, we have start date. So this is how uh, the format is expecting and then the value and fire is gonna parse it directly for us into a one line code. So we don't need to parse anything and so if we add actually any variable there, it's going to be directly available within the CLI. So it's really a beautiful thing. But now that we can pass this to the CLI, let's add it to our make file. So now basically I added all the value from my PyJava parameters over there so that I can customize directly the query if I want to run the query as against specific timeline and pass all the other variable needed instead of arcoding it in the project. A thing that I used to do that I like to do also is that working with um, an environment file, please add it this to your git ignore. We'll do it right now. I'm adding this to the git ignore and the dot env is ignore so I can safely uh, create the dot env and put any sensitive information and it won't be committed. And so coming back to our make file, what does include is basically just loading all the variable from the .env and export it for the session. So basically we can start to fill our .env with all those variables. All right, so now I push back basically the variable needed. Uh, so start date, end date, the, the PyPI project. So this is 
the field that's going to construct uh, my big query query, right? And then I have some uh, information about the credentials. S3 path already, I'm getting ready for pushing to S3. So now let's run our pipeline again and see if everything work as expected. Meaning that we have the environment variable passed to our command line here. And basically this is interpreted as a Python tick model, which is passed to our code. And done, still working so far. We've done the hardest, to be honest, because we introduce a uh, Python tick to manage mob, uh, the job parameters models. We get the data as a Pandas data frame. And now there is only the fun part, which is uh, using a uh, DuckDB. But before, what I want to do again is validate uh, the source data to a Python tick model. So here we just have the Pandas data frame and we don't check any type from the result that we are getting from the query. And who knows if the source data is gonna change over there. And we don't want to mess our pipeline because of that. Python tick again to the rescue. Uh, so here we're gonna uh, create a model that define the source data. So quick hack, if you go again to BigQuery and actually look at the uh, schema source over here, and you just pay, copy this in an ugly way and you pass it to your best friend and you say, here is my uh, BigQuery table schema. Please create a Python tick model. So again, creating a Python tick model is pretty straightforward. The challenge here is that we have uh, a couple of complex fields. Uh, that's where creating the Python tick model can be a bit complicated. So this is basically um, the file downloads. And as you can see, I'm actually nesting other Python tick models. So specifically for the complex type. So here you see, this is another uh, Python tick model, the file uh, details. So that's the two one which are had a complex of nesting fields. So what, I, what can I do now is basically two things. First, we can uh, create a new test for this model but you, we can also create a validation function that validate the data frame we're getting um, based on that model. So how it's gonna work is that basically I'm validating a given Panda data frame, uh, given any Pydentic model and try to match it. It's pretty straightforward. What, what I do actually is loop over each row of the data frame and pass it the model and see if it works. So now back on the test, that's another interesting thing. You see easily you need a uh, fixture data, right? And here our pen and data frame that we are validating is already in memory, right? It's going to GDBC and then basically load in memory. So you could try to create a Panda specific schema, but it's actually pretty hard. And it's not actually easy to get uh, that Panda data frame schema, how it's represented internally. Anyway, there is an easy way uh, while using DuckDB. So what we're gonna do here in our pipeline is that we're gonna directly uh, copy the result uh, locally using DuckDB. So I'm gonna create a DuckDB connection and now I can basically just do a simple uh, copy command. So what do we do actually is that we use the copy commands. This is the query that we do and we can directly query the data frame object here, no need to declare it, and then basically export it as a CSV. So let's run it again. Querying the data from BigQuery. I have a sample of uh, CSV now. And what I can do is just take, uh, let's say the first, uh, let's say the first uh, tree line and we call it sample CSV. So I have now um, a sample of data and uh, what I could do is to validate my model I created is basically use DuckDB um, to validate that. So I created a fixture and a fixture in PyTest is basically um, a test data set here for our use case that we're gonna use to different tests. And what I want to do basically here is just create another DuckDB in memory 
I create a table. So this is uh, basically the how DuckDB will interpret it when you load the data frame in memory. So you see here, I have a complex struct. So once I create the table, I basically load the sample uh, of data we just created into DuckDB and I convert it to a data frame. So I have a data frame ready with the right sample. So again, to create this with Pandas, like a sample data set, is actually uh, a bit harder, especially for nested fields, because Pandas is not easy to declare a schema for nested fields. So here you see it's pretty straightforward to understand uh, what's going on. But if you do uh, read the CSV directly in Pandas, it's a bit harder because you're gonna need to specify those nesting fields. And that's a nightmare I've been doing. I tried that, so don't. So we have now our data and now creating the function is, uh, the test function is pretty straightforward. I created two tests, one to validate the data. So I'm calling the validate data frame uh, function we created earlier, which is expecting a data frame and a Pydentic model. And so this should be good because that's directly the name or fixture, right? And this one is good. Um, and I'm also testing when the data is not correct. So I'm basically changing uh, the data with an invalid entry, you know, here as an integer, um, and that should raise an error. So the test should be positive when there is an error, which is raised. And so let's do make test again, and we're good. So three tests as passed. So now coming back to our pipeline, we can actually uh, call the validate data frame function, and we are passing the file downloads uh, models and we need to um, import also the data frame. So now we have this step. So basically our pipeline will stop if uh, the schema or the source is not as we used to expect. All right, what we're gonna do now is create it, uh, create another file called duck, where we're gonna put uh, our duckdb helpers. Let's say this function, for example, is to export the data locally. So we can create uh, an helper for that. We're gonna need a couple of functions here. Uh, the first thing is that we're gonna load the data frame into DuckDB and then from there we can export it locally or to the cloud, to S3 or to Mother Duck. So first thing first, loading the data to uh, from a Panda data frame and then we can create another function to export to S3. And to export to S3, uh, what Duck, DuckDB is gonna do is it's gonna download a specific extension automatically. But what we do need to do is specify uh, the AWS profile. And so how you do it is basically uh, use this function, which is called load AWS credential and specify your AWS profile. So AWS have different profile under your aws.config and you should have credential over there. Note there is a current limitation as per this video, unless you're watching this from the future, a couple of months from this release, and that might be solved, but it's not supporting actually uh, pretty well uh, SSO. You need specific AWS key, secret, and token, but you can actually generate that from an SSO login. And for that, I've put another make file entry point that you can run. And what it's gonna do is that export uh, those temporary credential and put it as a file uh, at the specific location that the DB is expected. But that's only if you run AWS with SSO, otherwise you can also fetch um, an IAM user like GCP and have this credential over there. Another helper that we can write is to write to S3 from DuckDB. And again, that's pretty straightforward. And what the nice thing is that you can also use Hive partitioning. So here you see that I'm actually using the same copy command that we did for local, but I'm gonna specify an S3 path. And uh, within that, I'm gonna also create two columns, which is gonna be my partition, the year and the month, based on the timestamp. And so that means that my data will be published, let's say my PyPI, and then year. So it's gonna be something uh, like that at the end, year, uh, sorry, two, 2023, months 12, and then uh, my data dot parquet, for example. So that's pretty handy because again, you can leverage uh, partitioning filtering when querying out over S3 instead of loading 
the whole data set. Parquet is pretty handy, it's compressed, it's typed. So, you know, less schema problems. All right, two other helpers I'm gonna write uh, directly now is one to uh, connect to ModderDuck. So to connect to ModderDuck, you can actually head over at ModderDuck.com, uh, create a free account. And once you connect it, what you can also do is go to setting and fetch your service token, which is right there. We're gonna be used to authenticate to ModderDuck. So to connect to ModderDuck, it's like to install an extension and set parameters in DuckDB. So we just load and install the ModderDuck extension, as you can see here, and we set the ModderDuck token and then we can use the attach command to uh, authenticate to mother duck and then push our data over there. Finally, the last function that we're gonna need is basically write to mother duck. And so what we're trying to do here is just making sure that our pipeline is impotent, meaning that if we run it uh, in multiple times with a different states on mother duck, it's still working. So that's why we have a create database if not exist create a table if not exists. And then what we do basically for inserting data, because we're just gonna always insert new data, fastest and easy way is basically to do a delete on a specific uh, timestamp uh, that we're gonna use and then do an insert on the new data on that specific uh, timestamp. All right, so we wrote all the function of DuckDB. That was pretty fast and actually uh, the easiest way so now what I'm gonna do is just refactor this to enable based on a specific parameter. If you remember, we had uh, this one, the destination, just pick specific condition to say, write to a CSV, write to S3, or write to mother work. We use the function that we did. All right, so now we have specific location that checking the parameters. As a reminder, is the Pydentic model parameters, right? So this is a list of string which can be local S3 or mother duck. And so here basically we are copying uh, to local CSV. If it's uh, local S3, what we do is load the credential. You remember we do just a call load a credential based on the profile and we can write to S3 with that. And this is the one for writing to mother duck. Uh, there is the, is checking by the way, the mother duck uh, token here. So you should definitely have on your .hand file the mother duck uh, token va uh, valid here be because this is gonna load it to here and make it available to the Python process. All right, we're done. So let's play a bit with the CLI now. So we can do make PyPI ingest and let's sync on all the different places. So local S3 and mother duck, it, things works as expected. And of course you can play with the different parameters. So like here, I'm taking a specific uh, months, uh, still working on DuckDB library project, but you can pick any Python library project, just change the value in your .m file. And that will load uh, directly for the make CLI commands, or you just run this command and specifically manually specify those. But that's the beauty of it. Now we can basically run this pipeline with different parameters. I'm running uh, the BigQuery uh, query. Uh, so this is the one, this is the parameter, the correct dates I've put in my .hand file. You see that I'm syncing for the tree. So locally, I just have a file here that just appeared. So the writing to CSV was successful. The writing data to S3 also, and now it's writing to ButterDuck and we're done. So let's check quickly on S3. So we had uh, the, uh, this is the bucket and PyPI file downloads. So we have this folder and you see it's partitioned correctly uh, to year and to months because if you remember, I filter for two month, uh, two days if for in April 2023. And we have the data which is uh, right there. Let's see for Mother Duck. Uh, so on Mother Duck, it should be this one and this uh, table. And again, uh, I can query from there. And the data is there too. So we spent quite some time actually on the first part of the, the pipeline here. Uh, and actually it's a best practice I encourage you to do for any other pipeline where you can define a model for your CLI 
and basically just fire so that you don't even need to parse uh, those uh, those parameter and just get adding over time and refactoring any hard coded value that you can see in your pipeline to say, hmm, I may run this pipeline in a different way. So that's pretty handy. And we've seen here the power of DuckDB in two places. The one first is was regarding tests. We created a, a fixture um, for our data source and it's pretty straightforward to create a table uh, defining a, a schema there and basically load the CSV to respect the schema and we have a data frame ready to be used at different places within our test function. And the second place we saw uh, DuckDB is basically for exporting at different place. So here to S3 and here to Mother Duck directly in the cloud. If you would not use DuckDB because I'm challenging myself directly Pandas, you would have to install different libraries in Python and it's not straightforward how to go there. So once the data is loaded in DuckDB, it's really easy to push it forward. Be mindful that we didn't do any transformation here because it's part of the learning of the series. We'll do a transformation layer afterwards, but you could also directly do some select statement and directly compute in memory and write the result back. All right, let's wrap up. In this video, we did a Python pipeline using interesting libraries like Python take to handle schema, Fire for CLI, LogGuru for logging, and of course, DuckDB to easily ingest the data and store it to any place we want. Would it be local, in the cloud on S3 or Mother Duck? Now we have the raw data ready to be query. And in the next video, we'll dive into the transformation layer using DBT, SQL, and DuckDB. Now get out of here and get quacky. I mean, Cody. <laughs>